Hi, and welcome back, everyone. Uh, with me this week, I have the author of the DataView plugin, Michael Brenner, also known as Blacksmith GU. Is that how you pronounce right. it? That's G right. <laughs> <laughs> how are you doing? Yeah. I'm doing all right today. How are you today? I am great. I'm very excited about uh, today and the, our chat today. Um, but so before we jump into data view, as I'm sure everyone is very curious to hear about, maybe you want to give us a little background on yourself. Who are you? Uh, uh, great. Sure. Let me give my two second description. I'm not here to sell a book or anything, so I don't have any accolades <laughs> can get to talk more about. Than that. <laughs> uh, my name is Michael. Uh, I am uh, the primary maintainer of DataView, and I've been probably an avid user of Obsidian since beta 0.8 in late 2019. Uh, it's probably been the first note-taking tool that I seriously actually use for longer than two months, uh, and I've been happily using it ever since. Uh, I'm a software developer in the Silicon uh, Bay Area, where I work mostly as a very technical back-end developer, but uh, I spend a lot of my free time on fun note-taking tools, productivity tooling, uh, and things like that. Very cool. So your plugin, DataView, has been downloaded 370,000 times, probably more since I said that. Uh, uh, yes, 376,000 times, I believe. There you go. Uh, and. I'm, I admit that I'm, and I'm almost ashamed to say that I haven't yet integrated into my own workflow. So all my experience of data view is pretty much watching other people doing amazing things with it. <laughs> yeah. So maybe you can give me kind of a overview of what data view is and, you know, why I might use it. Sure, I would say DataView is a power user tool first and foremost. Uh, it's a different way of looking at a vault of Markdown notes. Normally, when you have Markdown notes, the basic stuff is just some text in, in a folder, effectively. The next step up that Obsidian does is more of a Zettelkast in approach, which is let's add links to it so that now I can view pretty Markdown, I can link, I can add tables, and so on and so forth. Uh, DataView is the next step up which is let's not just add links, let's also add metadata to my notes. So let me write extra context. Let me add little attributes. Let me add notes to it. And then provide a simple way of listing all notes that have data and viewing all the data in those notes in fancy tables and other custom views that people have made. Um, it is effectively a search engine, perhaps, or a metadata engine uh, for vaults to let you make it more data-oriented, data-focused. OK. But so I can use it to search for notes, uh, but it sounds like I can do much more, uh, not just uh, search yes, for it them. Yes, but... you can search over notes by any attribute you have set. You can visualize these notes. You can integrate this. Uh, like if you have data you want to see in other uh, APIs or in other plugins that support data view, you can also view all the data in that. Uh, and of course, on top of this, it is relatively fast. Uh, so generally, query times are going to be under 100 milliseconds. Average render time is going to be under 20 milliseconds. So the view here is uh, it is going to very quickly show you all the data you have in your vault based on any arbitrary query on a full query language. Uh, so so that's pretty interesting. Uh, you, you're saying that other plugin developers can use the uh, data view in their plugins? Yes, that's right. So, so it's not just for end users, but you know. Yeah, so end users, of course, can directly use data view through the data view code blocks, which lets you render tables, lists, calendars, and some other things. Um, but you can also directly, if you're a plugin developer, you can directly call data view and you can run any data view query and get uh, JavaScript or TypeScript results, which you can then put into your own. Um, and it is in use by several large uh, existing plugins. I believe the Kanban plugin supports it using optionally, as well as uh, several other Obsidian DB is another one uses it, which is a folder based, I guess, easier to use uh, way to use data view and so on. Cool. Well, so I, uh, I'm sure you, you, you saw just now I gave a, an introduction to uh, the Obsidian sample plugin. Yes. And as a way to just get started with plugin development. And I also just happened to see that the data view repository was also generated from the sample plugin. Yes. <laughs> so humble beginnings. Indeed, yeah. That view so, started as uh, a tiny little 50 line addition to the sample plugin to just uh, list files that had a certain substring in their name. Oh, I, yeah, I was going to ask, like, how did you get the, the, the idea to develop it in the first place? Was it just something that came to you uh, like a late night? 
Uh, it was in a way. I think it's been something that I've been thinking about a lot for a while. Um, I don't know if other people have done this, but uh, I've bounced between note-taking tools probably a dozen times in the past five years because uh, I have some idealistic sense in my brain of what I want my note-taking tool to do, uh, but I never really found one that exactly did it. Uh, and in this case, what I wanted a note-taking tool to do was I wanted to be able to add data to my notes, and then uh, I'm very I'm a programmer and very that oriented, very tech oriented. And I wanted to be able to do, I wanted to write code that I could then query my notes with. Uh, and so data view was a very, very basic attempt where I literally just wrote a trivial little scripting language, whereas list and then by a tag or folder, uh, and then it would just list all the files in that folder that match the tag. Uh, and uh, it was just, it was the very first thing. It's like, instead of a notion style where you have a table and you can only, you have to put pages in specific tables, like, no, no, no. I just, I don't want any organization. I just want to write notes. And then I, after the fact, I want to be able to write these queries that let me actually view them oh. any way I want to. Like bring them all in the same place eventually. Yeah. No matter, like, it, it, you you don't really have to design upfront for the That's kind right. of the view you want, but with data view, you kind of, br kind of bring everything into the same place. Yeah, the goal is uh, just, just add tags and hopefully, and then add metadata, and then after the fact later, you can visualize it any way you want to. Uh, because the goal here, right, is uh, if you want good notes, if you want to take a lot of notes, you need to minimize the amount of overhead it takes to write a note. Uh, and right. in this case, like, I don't want to add things to a table. I don't remember which table tracks, you know, all right, what book did I read this week? I just want to make a note called book, add the data into it, and then it will automatically show up in all the appropriate views. Right, like deferring or, or delaying the decision. Sure. Uh, yeah. for for organization okay so uh, like what is i mean obviously it's it's immensely popular these days but uh you know obviously it wasn't always like that uh yes. so w first off was data view the first plugin that you built data view is my first and only plugin first uh, and only yes Man, you hit jackpot uh, might right in away. The future, yeah. <laughs> uh, I frankly got, I think I was very lucky in many ways, and I was very fortunate because the Obsidian community was very highly motivated. Um, I think I have, I think that of you is a good plugin. I'm not going to say it's a bad one. And I think other people also thought it was good. And in fact, uh, frankly, I didn't do much to make it popular beyond make it. Um, it was really the Obsidian community, several individual people who just off of me posting in Discord once uh, picked up the plugin and effectively ran away with it. Uh, and uh, I went from, uh, you know, just, hey, quick, guys, look at this cool screenshot I made on Discord in like late February 2021 uh, to uh, suddenly getting a tremendous number of users and a tremendous amount of feedback. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess yeah, like we just saw in, in the manifest, you can only put like a uh, like a, a your, the author's name. But what you're saying is that there's so many other people that have been working with you and contributing to the success of data view. Yeah, absolutely, um, without a doubt. I mean, so uh, on our on the Obsidian Discord, uh, there is a dedicated. First, it was just in plugin help plugins, and the data view got its own dedicated thread, and now we have a full dedicated channel for it. Uh, and in that, there's probably about five or six people who very regularly, on their own accord, without me ever reaching out, and you know, all, all I could say is thank you, uh, is several people who have added documentation, tremendous such documentation data view, helped who knows how many people with uh, query uh, questions, how to use this strange query language, my stuff doesn't work, it's really slow, uh, and so on. And uh, I think Obsidian is blessed to have a community like that. Uh, for sure. I mean, uh, I... I, I've learned so much by just uh, being uh, like stalking the plugin dev yeah, channel exactly. <laughs> and just looking for for questions and people you know answering them. And I make a little. I have a document where I, whenever I find like a little nugget uh, of plugin dev trivia, uh, I write it down in a big note. And then hopefully one day I will integrate it in some form of documentation. Yeah. But there's just so much good stuff in there. Yes. Uh, even though you might not need it right now, uh, in the future you will, <laughs> yes, most absolutely. likely. Uh, very cool. So, uh, how much? You know, like, are you, you mentioned that you have this this uh, this whole team of of uh, contributors working on data view today? Uh, how much are you uh, working on data view uh, yourself today? 
so I kind of go in cycles for data view, I think. Um, it is a long-term project. Uh, I worked on it incessantly when it first started, I think, because I had plenty of free time to do it. Uh, and then you know, I was also made, of course, by lots of people actually picking up and liking the plugin. And I think I go on like maybe two month cycles where I'll shift from, I work on it a lot and push out a new feature to, all right, like I've done too much. I'm just going to let it sit for a month or yeah. two and make sure I don't crash anyone because I have indeed broken out of you several times before. I apologize for that. I'm trying not to do it. <laughs> uh, so uh, I would say I, I'm still pretty active for it. It's not going anywhere. Uh, I have interesting plans for it in the future, um, but I'm mostly waiting for the dust to settle and make sure everything is stable before I start breaking everything again. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I mean, a lot of people are using a data view today. Uh, and, you know, just just what you told me already sounds pretty, pretty sweet uh, to be able to do all that. Uh, is there anything you know that you're thinking about adding eventually, or do you have a roadmap that you that uh, you're able to share? What's the what's the uh, dreams and ambitions? Maybe a verbal roadmap. Uh, I've had I've had textual roadmaps before, but uh, actually I think there might still be one of the that main data view readme. I think the big thing for data view is there's two major paths I want to go down. Uh, the first is uh, data security, or in other words, backups. Uh, so. Mm -hmm. I don't, data view shouldn't go anywhere. Um, you should be fine. And also data view is a query language and not really a primary, like, uh, you know, if you uninstall data view, all your notes, all your metadata is still there. Data view is just not there to show it for you. Mm -hmm. But still, I think uh, we'll have a built around uh, all of these tables and lists that data view generates. Uh, and so my goal is like to make it so that if you ever decide to step off of Obsidian, step away from data view, uh, sad as that may be, is to let you save all of that data directly. Um, and then mm. also, there's also other nice things that come with being able to effectively convert a data view table into true markdown, uh, such as uh, oh, now I can actually search over data view tables themselves. Uh, and uh, if you have custom styling and other things, you can do that and just skip data view entirely. Right, because it's like a transient view, right? Uh, That's right. Yeah, data view like is a, it's a, a ephemeral view that uh, the plug you have to have the plugin installed for it to work. And a lot of people may not they want to be able to view things without having the plugin installed. Or not having installed because you know right. for some people that if it doesn't work it crashes etc they need workarounds uh, a million different reasons so like a like a a write to file command that just yeah, takes pretty, a pretty result much exactly. and, ah I, yeah, yeah I can see that especially if you're uh, you know uh, looking to migrate off of uh, Obsidian one day uh, yes, if, if that should happen be. yeah. Um, <laughs> But also, if if you just want to, you know, share with someone else, I guess, you know, who's not using Obsidian. Yes, right? also a very good point. Uh, that you know, if you just want to share this Markdown document, and you have a, um, a data view query that you know obviously won't work on their machine. Yep. Yep. Um, so I can I get can definitely see that um, happening. Um, yeah, I I am definitely going going to try it out. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. Uh, I'm, I'm actually gonna look and see if we have some some questions. Um, uh, I mean, there's there's a lot of love for data view in the in the comments. I I can tell. Um, there there is definitely uh, yeah. So so people believe that uh, Michael is a software engineer by trade. I believe you mentioned that. Uh, yep. Early on, you're working as a software engineer um, right. on the west coast of the U.S. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah, Silicon Valley. Cool. Um, so yeah, so you you obviously have a uh, pretty good experience with uh, building software, um, but like, yeah, exactly. So how much experience with code did you have before building DataView? You know? Uh, so I started. I think my story is going to be a typical nerdy story, which is that <laughs> uh, I started doing competitive programming in middle school, uh, and so I've done wow. it for probably about eleven or twelve years of any kind of programming experience. A fair bit of that was in school, of course. I think in terms of how much experience have I had, like sitting down writing serious programs, it's probably been about seven or eight years. Uh, so I am pretty experienced at this. I am pretty good. I guess I'm a pretty good programmer. 
Um, and I think obviously that helps. Data view is pretty complicated. Uh, obviously not what I recommend for your first plugin uh, if you haven't programmed before, but uh, yeah. it's also not that difficult. And I think many people, if you have a year or two of experience and you can conceptualize how does computer work, um, I think you're definitely be set to write something like it. Right. Oh yeah. Uh, so another question here, write to file would be awesome for Obsidian publish. That, that's yeah, also a yeah, very good point. That's right. Uh, you know, if you want actually want to publish it. Uh, so very cool. Um, and yeah, you know, competitive programming, I've, uh, I've only heard people do it. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm not a competitive uh, uh, person myself, uh, but uh, I, I've seen people and it actually it looks like a pretty cool experience. It is very stressful, but very enjoyable. I think if you have the opportunity to do it, especially if you are in college or just after college and you like to do any of the big competitions, um, uh, I would definitely recommend it. It is a great way to learn how to program. Uh, that being said, competitive programming is very different from actual programming like plugins and software. Uh, so uh, make sure you keep the skill set separate, but it's still very fun. Yeah. So I'm I'm uh, I'm curious. Do you have a uh, do you have a favorite plugin uh, other than you know data view? Obviously, you're using that all the time. <laughs> yeah, I'm, not, I'm not quite that that uh, uh, hubristic to uh, <laughs> to say data view is my favorite plugin. Obviously, I like data view. Uh, I would say uh, I shift plugins a fair bit. I think the ones that have remained constant the longest is I really like Templator because I think it fits really well with how right. you use data view because you can set up all of your front down, uh, uh, front matter, uh, YAML, and metadata ahead of time. Makes it very easy to write new notes if you do want to get that kind of table-like experience. Like, right. I have a, a page of a certain type with a bunch of metadata. I just want to fill it all out. Um, I also really enjoy uh, Minimal Theme and the plugin that comes with it. And then uh, Admonitions, I think, is another uh, fun plugin. Which is, I didn't I know like that Minimal Theme view. came with a plugin. Yeah, um, yeah. I guess the fault question is, what's my favorite theme? And for that, is is minimal. Um, I think that's probably a popular answer. It is a great theme, and it also is very customizable. It comes with its entire own uh, plugin just for managing that single theme. Ah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I'm. I, I have to say, I'm. I'm. Um, I'm still going on on the 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 built-in template uh, template functionality. So. Mm -hmm. I, um, but I have glanced at Templator a, a few times. I think that there's, uh, uh, oh yeah, it, so indeed the, the theme settings uh, is indeed a plugin. So that's uh, what you mentioned by minimal coming actually coming yep. with a, a plugin. Yep. Oh, interesting. Uh, so I think I saw someone uh, asking about uh, Templator and data view integration. Uh, do you, know? uh, you can actually do them together. Uh, oh, so I, I've directly asked on the Templator GitHub before if we could go further with integration, uh, effectively like just directly use data view inside. Uh, you can't quite, but you can effectively get data view and Templator because uh, data view exposes a global API you can call from anywhere. You can you can open up the developer console of City and use it there if you want to. Um, it's just a big object called data view API. And you can actually access that from Templator and you can get the full data view API, oh. including making markdown queries, uh, querying things and, and writing arbitrary markdown and so on. So you actually can do pretty deep integration there if you want to, uh, arbitrary queries inside Templator, which is cool. That That is is actually really cool. Uh, yeah, obviously <laughs> a lot of love for for, for both them. Templator is also, a, I think it's it's one of the top top plugins yes. out there, right? Yeah, I, I don't have your numbers. Five thousand. It was the it was the most popular plugin for a fair bit of time. Yeah. Um, let's see. Do we have any? So feel free to add your questions for either me or Michael, yeah. um, and we'll be happy to answer. Uh, if you have any questions on data view specifically, anything about its history or where it's going, now's your time. Uh, yeah, happy to answer anything and everything. So uh, uh, we have one question here on uh, whether you have any advice on managing large amount of metadata in data view. So when you know when the when's the limit? Like how far right. can you take data view? Uh, I think performance wise, it will do okay. I think the main concern here is uh, I have a lot of files. I have a lot of metadata in these files and I don't know how to discover it maybe. Um, I don't know how to like clean it up or filter it if I have a bunch of it. Um, it's kind of a traditional issue you run into when like I have a, I just have a bunch of data. 
Uh, I think it's actually a hard problem, and it's probably something the plugin itself should do better. Uh, I think the big thing is uh, visualization. Uh, the first problem is I need to be able to easily view what is everything I have in my vault <laughs> relevant to anything at all. Um, the other part of it would be migrations, which is uh, I have a bunch of data. I don't want that data anymore. I want to change it to a different format. Uh, I don't know if I have a great solution for this. The real way you'd have to fix it is you need to make it so that you can have scripts or queries that you can directly edit things from. Uh, that's mm -hmm. also been a highly requested feature. It's also something I've been looking at working on, which may make this easier. Um, in the meanwhile, though, there are tools like MetaEdit, I believe, um, and other Obsidian plugins that do effectively allow you to directly edit YAML front matter, which can help for kind of like, I have a bunch of data, I need to migrate it. Um, mm -hmm. There is, I think there is potential though for we need a way to just, I have a bunch of data and I want to view it in a way that's not just a table. Um, hierarchical right. view that highlights things, maybe integrate data view directly with search, which would be cool. So we have uh, two questions here uh, related to, uh, you know, how you, you mentioned that, um, like building a data view query is essentially programming, right? Yes. So we have, for example, a question if there's any plans on building a more you know, uh, user interface uh, for building queries that could potentially uh, you know, create a better onboarding experience for those who you know, don't understand the query language. I think this is a great question. Yeah, so I think... Um... One of, I don't know if I regret it, but perhaps a choice that I could have done differently when I first started data view is I could have gone down the path of a GUI builder immediately instead of uh, the path I did now, which is you effectively write uh, code into a data view code block. Mm -hmm. uh, it's There's a lot of legacy now. There's a The query language is relatively complicated at this point, uh, and writing a GUI for it is pretty challenging. Uh, I am definitely... Right. Looking at it, uh, I'm working currently on a alternative query syntax, which is easier for me to make a GUI for. Uh, mm. And hopefully, if all goes well, then there will be a very bare bones visual editor. Uh, I guess it'd be hard for me to compare to, but effectively, uh, like in Notion, other tools where you can pick a source, you can then add fields in a drop down menu to right. render and so on. Something much, much more conventionally, maybe like an Excel table or something. Uh, so I am working on that because I think it would help because I think the biggest barrier for people using data view is they don't really understand the queries that they're writing sometimes, uh, especially once you get past the like, all right, if I just want to draw a table, I can figure that out, right? It's a table and then some fields. But I think it really gets hard for it's like, all right, I want to group by fields. I want to filter fields. I want to flatten this into a list and then group it again. Uh, so uh, there, I am planning on a GUI builder of some sort of other people. I think there's also external contributors also looking at some kind of query builder, which also be helpful. Um, it's not quite there yet but uh, I am hoping that it'll get there because I think that will fix a big barrier for people using it. Right, because it also doesn't have to be a, like a one-to-one, -one, like it doesn't have to have like parity. Uh, That's right. You, you could uh, have like a basic uh, query builder uh, that, you know, make the more common operations available and then you can switch over to code mode and yeah, then exactly. you, you unleash the beast. The, the real perfect scenario would be uh, the the GUI view, all it does is it just writes the query for you, and then you can rewrite the, uh, the raw query if you want to. Uh, right. That's pretty tricky to get right, I think, in Obsidian. Uh, just uh, it's hard to set up a GUI editor that works like that, uh, but uh, right. I think it's possible. So. Ooh, and now I'm thinking of like uh, potentially having like um, where you can create uh, pre-built queries uh, that you can like reference. Would that make sense? Where you can kind of have a, a, a library of, of data view uh, yeah. kind of built plugins, uh, or sorry, uh, queries, and then you just reference that. And then you can have a whole separate view for building these queries, right? Yeah, um, uh, it would be yeah, exactly where you effectively it's like, all right, here's my general, like my monthly overview when I want to embed this in every monthly note and so on and right. so forth. Um, there actually is nothing really stopping that. That's actually not that difficult for me to implement, I think. Um, it's just one, I, <laughs> that views a lot of feature requests, uh, which is just kind of par and course for it is a plugin that affects your core workflow. And so everyone has opinions for how I want to specifically, and uh, it is hard for me to keep uh, keep up with the sheer amount of uh, of interest in people who actually want to go different ways with the plugin. Uh, which, as an aside, if you can program, I highly recommend. If you have something you want data view to do, just uh, fork it and write it, and then if it's good, then feel free to uh, put up a fork request. I'm happy to merge anything. 
Yeah. I mean, uh, more ice, uh, obviously wouldn't, wouldn't, um, would help, I imagine. Uh, and you know, it's, it's not just code, right? I imagine that, you know, just documenting and I, I, I just looked and, you know, the documentation page for data view is there as well. Uh, it looks, uh, like, uh, a lot of work has gone into that was as well. Yeah. So still there... behind. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you I still think we're, 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 we're in a decent state now, but there is an ongoing okay. active effort to uh, to try and make it better. Mainly, uh, I think the big thing with data view is you need lots of examples, right? Uh, if you ever learn right. how to program, uh, most people learn programming by example. Data view is effectively programming uh, yeah, by copy paste. Tons of, yeah, effectively copy paste. <laughs> it's fine. It's it's totally fine. You need code that works. So you can grok it. Right. Um, so let me see. Uh, I'm just gonna see if I have a. So uh, you mentioned that there's like these um, inline uh, attributes. Is that what you, what they're called? Uh, yes, they're inline fields. Oh, inline fields. Okay. So maybe you could explain like how 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 does it work for someone who haven't used them before? Are they? Is it? Uh, it's not like uh, your pure markdown. Uh, format, right? It's yes, it custom. is effectively Markdown Plus. Um, I looked desperately for something that already existed for this. Um, we do support the thing that exists, which is YAML front matter. It's effectively a little block of the YAML markup language, which is an alternative syntax for effectively writing like t uh, keys to values, um, mm -hmm. like metadata key to like whatever that metadata value is. Um, we support that so you can write YAML front matter if you want to. And then we also support inline fields, which is a kind of room researchy inspired way to write uh, metadata, which is just inside your markdown anywhere in the document, it's key and then double colon and then value. <laughs> and uh, we support ones that hide, ones that don't hide. And uh, a lot of people end up using that as their preferred way of inputting because you can stylize it and make it look pretty, um, which also look, often looks nicer than YAML. Uh, of course, uh, there's a lot, there's a little bit of jank around it. Um, the live editor, live preview, came out in 0.15, I believe, maybe 0.14, about six months ago. And uh, that uh, broke a bunch of integrations with data view in terms of rendering the stuff prettily. Uh, and uh, I still haven't quite got into the point where it all looks as nice as it would inside of, a, I guess, like a professional thing like Rome Research. Uh, but uh, we are definitely getting there. The baseline is all there. Just have to do the gritty work of working with uh, the Obsidian editor, which is Codemeter 6, which uh, working with text editors is hard. <laughs> It is hard, uh, yeah. And uh, the the step up from uh, from Code Mirror five to six, it's a it's a big change. Yes, it was a rewrite of the API. It is a better API now, but it is still Code Mirror is just foundationally a very complex uh, piece of software, a very cool one. Uh, but uh, you have to work about all right. I have to work about reducers and mappers, and like I have to live e events reading. Uh, so uh, I have no idea how to use it still, and I've mostly just been going on other contributors who have done most of the hard work for me so far. But uh, I will either a, contr a contributor hopefully will uh, save me from uh, the pain, uh, <laughs> or eventually I'll dig it and, and fix it for real so it looks nicer. Cool. Oh, I like this question. Uh, have you noticed changes in your own personal thought process now that you use Obsidian and Data View? Uh, I think I write notes a lot more, I just, if I have a note I wanna write, I will just write the note, I will add random metadata to it, and then I will figure out how to organize it later. Um, so I think probably the biggest shift was instead of let's organize now, um, it's I will mm. just write data of some sort, and then I front. will organize it once I actually have more than one piece of data. Um, mm. So like, you know, when I started tracking my books, I'm like, I'm just gonna write about the book and then I'll actually like clean up this metadata and actually make it presentable, which was easy with data view uh, once I have a second book to actually write about when there's actually a mm. point to have a table. Um, I think also it helped me to look at like, how, well, like, what can I do in my note taking to minimize the amount of actual organization I need to do? So in this case, just like, I'm just gonna write a bunch of tags on all of my files. Um, and uh, hopefully those tags will be enough where I can just view them anywhere I want to later on. So I think mm -hmm. uh, part of it is just add a bunch of data upfront whenever you write a note and then uh, rely on your search tools later after the fact to actually organize them. Uh, and this is pretty common. There are other fancy note tools that uh, support this kind of, uh, I guess, write-based workflow, where I just write your data first and then let the right. tool solve the annoying part of organization. Like this evolutionary think, uh, process. Right. 
Oh, um, and I think it is for me. It has made me actually take notes because before I just hated organizing my notes. I was terrible right, at it. Right. Right. So uh, we're coming up on the hour here. Uh, I've really enjoyed uh, chatting with you, and I hope that you all um, have learned any something new uh, during this uh, session. Uh, so we are going to be back next week for another hour, uh, a new tutorial and a new guest uh, coming on. Um, so I really hope that you've enjoyed uh, this session and that we'll see you next week. A huge thank you for my to Michael for showing up and telling us about uh, data view. It's uh, it's been great. Yeah, thank you, and of course, thank you everyone who came. Yeah, thank you. Goodbye, everyone. Adios. Adios.